Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and corporate board member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this episode of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm Doug Cha, the Executive Director of the Governance Center at the Conference Board, uh, and your host for today, standing in for the show's regular host, T.K. Kerstetter, who should be back next week. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show, which is being filmed at the Conference Board studio in New York City. Um, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, and that's the topic of shareholder engagement, and more importantly, the board's role in engagement. And joining me today is uh, Doug Eakley, the Alan V. Lowenstein Professor of Corporate and Business Law at Rutgers University Law School, and founder and co-director of the Rutgers Center for Corporate Law and Governance. Doug, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Why don't, you know, to start off, why don't you just give us a little bit of a, uh, an idea of uh, a description of the Governance Center that you sure. run at Rutgers. We're in our third year of operation. It's an interdisciplinary forum for uh, research, analysis, discussion of issues concerning corporate law and governance. Um, our objectives are to identify and, and, and promote best practices in corporate governance and to provide a bridge between the law school and the corporate and real worlds um, to inform our research and our teaching, to introduce our students to that real world and hopefully um, have people coming across in both directions. Uh, some of the programs were, we, we have for example three programs coming up next month, our third annual Institute on Corporate Compliance, uh, a panel discussion on the lawyer as legal risk manager, and a third on the implications of blockchain technology for uh, corporate governance. Great. Well, it's, uh, it's great that you've set this up at Rutgers and that students are very interested in pursuing uh, studies in corporate governance. Um, let's talk about shareholder engagement, something that you and I have talked about and you've been observing very carefully. Um, what have you been seeing um, as the new world, brave new world of shareholder engagement has unfolded? I'm not sure it's a brave new world, <laughs> but in terms of developments that I would highlight, uh, I think in the past six to seven years, um, we've seen the emergence of active shareholder engagement on the part of passive institutional investors. And that has many potential consequences in significant part because of the types of issues on which uh, they are engaging. Got it. And, you know, th so what do you think the driving factors is behind that? I mean, there's, you know, a, there, there have been calls for uh, more director shareholder engagement, but in the past it's really been, you know, the pension funds and specific, you know, issue-oriented investors. Mm -hmm. what, wh why are the passive investors getting so focused on this now? Well, I, I don't know for sure, but, but uh, as Larry Fink describes his BlackRock's investors, they are the quintessential long-term investors. They are the patient investors. Uh, they, well, we uh, are investing for our retirement in most instances and therefore take a long-term horizon in terms of their investment strategy. So in one sense, it's good business to align your uh, shareholder engagement with your investment investors' uh, interests. Uh, secondly, although I think that the large influx of uh, capital into passive index funds, now 42% of all publicly traded funds, has put a great deal more pressure on the Black Rocks and the Vanguards and the State Street Global Advisors um, to align themselves with their with their custom with their investors, and and that's that's also the sort of a, the issue grid on which they are aligning. That's um, sustainability defined in terms of environment, social, and governance issues, and the governance issues in particular, an emphasis on diverse board diversity. Um, but long-term strategic investment as opposed to, and explicitly as opposed to, short-termism. Got it. 
Um, well, you've been, you know, talking to some of these folks. What are they, you know, kind of from a practical logistical standpoint, you know, how are they, how are they gearing up for this, uh, this, this new world of shareholder engagement? According to a number of people with whom I've discussed this, uh, I think there's an active conversation going on in a number of boards of directors in terms of what to do and how to engage. Uh, I think a, a majority of publicly traded companies in the Fortune 500 now have engaged, have directors uh, engaging with shareholders this past year. Um, I think that, that, that there's still a sense of unease that the traditional role model of a director is somehow being, is evolving to the point where the directors uh, know they're going to have to communicate directly with shareholders or the institutional investors and in particular on issues of corporate strategy and also on issues of concern to the institutional investors such as ESG which are not on the priority list of most boards of directors and uh, if you listen to the NACD um, uh, annual survey of public uh, companies. So well, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty heavy lift for a board member these days, especially as you talked about uh, compared to board member, uh, the job profile uh, a number of years ago. So, you know, what's your, you know, advice in, in terms of, you know, what's your insight that you would impart to directors <coughs> um, when, you know, in, in this new environment? Well, we've, we've, we've seen an evolution of the role of the director from one of more monitoring management to something more than that. The challenge now is um, for boards of directors to engage with management in the development of, of long-term strategy, be able to articulate that, and then relate it um, when institutional investors come calling to inquire. I think that's really the first part of it. It's also a very handy defensive mechanism if you as a director can articulate why a particular short-term hedge fund activist intervention is not in the long-term best interests of the company. So it sounds like when we talk about engagement for the board members, part of this is heightened engagement with management itself to be in a position to actually engage with these uh, investors. Yeah, th that's right. Um, I think, actually, again, Larry Fink in his most recent annual letter to his portfolio um, companies talks in terms of expecting boards of directors to engage with management in the formulation of long-term strategy and calls upon directors to engage with institutional investors to make sure that those directors uh, understand the objectives of the investors and, and act to fulfill them. And indeed, the, the sort of the, the, the stick behind the carrot is basically, and if you're not responsive to expressions of shareholder interest and strategy, um, we are prepared to vote our proxies or to vote with, uh, um, on various shareholder proposals. And that's that, and that's a big change from uh, from what we're used to. It's a sea change. It's I think it's just in process. I think it's it's beyond just beginning. But but I think there's a lot more that we're going to see develop over time. And that's even before we get to. And I know we don't have enough time for it to to explore the concept in this year's letter by Mr. Fink of corporations having a social purpose that goes beyond the sort of. Um, shareholder primacy model that has been more or less the typical model for the last couple of decades. Got it. So um, I guess, you know, just to wrap up, what, you know, what, what do you think the most important thing really is um, for the board members to understand about where we're going here? I, I think the board members need to be reinforced in their institutional shareholders' desire for long-term, sustainable value creation and to help management resist the temptation to yield to uh, short-term pressures from activist shareholders. Okay, well, sounds simple enough, but as we <laughs> know, this, uh, this is a very complex, uh, a complex area. So please stay tuned. So, Doug, thank you for joining us today. Um, that'll conclude uh, today's episode of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll be back again next week here at the Conference Board Studios so you can learn how to be a better board member or committee member. Thanks a lot. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. 
brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member, along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.